If you've ever watched a Garage Fab video and thought, come on, bro, shut your mouth and just weld something, this video might be for you. Hey, Garage Fabbers, this one's gonna be a little weird, and I apologize in advance. In my videos, it's important to me to try and teach you how I do things and explain why I do things the way I do. It's so important that I created an entire playlist about the basics of suspension design rather than just building some suspension. The goal is to encourage you to go into your garage and do some kick-ass stuff yourself. On today's project, I can't really do any of that. I'm building an axle truss. Why? I don't even know. I narrowed the axle, but I think it's plenty strong, so a truss is kinda pointless. I just really wanted to make one. Also, I can't really explain how I designed the dang thing because it was all done in my head. How do you describe mental processes and pictures? The best I can do is show you how I brought those pictures to life using some quarter inch MDF. I decided how long the entire truss would be and decided it would extend from the center of the axle tube to about an inch above the differential. I wanted the top of the truss to be flat, and starting at the inner link bar tabs, the top would slope down until it met the axle tube. Determining how the wooden truss plates would be cut to fit around the differential was literally trial and error. I took some measurements and sketched the approximate shapes into the wood and cut it out with a jigsaw. Well, until my jigsaw I've had for 17 years broke. Then I improvised, and I cut the rest of the wood with a grinder. The guesstimated shapes didn't fit, which was somewhat intended. That allowed me to sculpt the MDF until it fit like a glove. Creating a wooden version of the front plate made a perfect template to copy onto steel plate. I'm using a plasma cutter, but if you've got a little patience, a cutoff wheel will work just fine. With the front plate done, we can use the basic shape of the template to create the rear plate, but the cutout to fit the differential will be a little different. On this plate, just straight angled cuts will be fine, and I'll use those angled cuts to help remove the factory Mustang axle bushings. I used a Sawzall for this on my last Mustang axle, but the plasma cutter certainly saved me some time. The top plates will be cut into strips that can fit between the front and rear plates. This will create a nice valley for the weld bead to lay in, providing 100% penetration between the top and side plates. Before welding anything though, I'm going to weld in some blind lock nuts for the link bar bushings, since I won't be able to get a wrench back there when this thing is done. The locking nuts I'm using are not nylock nuts, because the nylon would just melt out when welding them on. There's a few final cuts I need to make before welding any of this together. I need to make the openings for where the link bars attach. I'm making slots where the link bar tabs are so that I can weld the tabs to the truss from the outside. And lastly, a couple of circles for access to the grease fittings for the upper control arm bushings. Now that all the pieces are cut, I can finally mark where the tops of the upper link bar tabs will be. I created those tabs extra tall in the last video because I knew I wanted them to reach the top of the truss, but I had no way of knowing how high they would need to be. Now that all the pieces are made, I can just mark the tabs and trim them to the right height. Now I can start welding the entire assembly together. The way I'm welding is going to be very strategic and kind of nerve wracking. I'm going to fully weld the entire external structure, but I am not welding it to the axle or the axle tabs in any way, except maybe a couple tacks to help hold everything in place. There's two reasons for that. One, I still don't have an engine installed, so I still don't have a pinion angle, which is needed before I permanently weld the link bar tabs on. So once the engine and trans is installed, I'm going to need to be able to remove this truss so I can cut the link bar tabs back off and rotate the axle to properly set the pinion angle. Then I can fully weld the tabs on and then I can fully weld the truss in place. Reason number two for fully welding the truss before attaching it to the axle, there will be a lot of welding across the top of this truss. When you superheat metal and then cool it like you do when welding, metal shrinks. It won't be visible when I'm done, but all the welding across the top of this truss will shrink the top slightly, causing the truss to bow upwards a little bit. Here's a fun visual example of that warpage I was telling you about. As I was creating the welds across the top of the truss, I was hearing some loud pops and cracks, and what was happening was 
the small tack welds I placed at the ends of the truss started to break on both sides. So if those tack welds didn't break, or worse, if I had already welded this to the axle tube, the entire axle tube might have started to curve with the warping axle truss. This is why I didn't want to attach it to the axle until it was completely fully welded. That could be really bad for the bearings inside the axle tube. That said, when it comes time to actually weld the truss on the axle, I'll just be using three or four one inch beads on each side, also to minimize heat warping. All that means nothing if I can't peel the truss off the upper link bar tabs after I'm done welding everything. So here's the moment of truth. I have got to get the axle truss off the axle before I can do any of the other work inside, like fully welding up the axle tabs. Something I just realized while taking the truss off is I have no way of accessing the bolts to get the link bars in and out. So I've got to create some sort of opening on the side there, just big enough for a socket so that I can get the bolts out. I don't know why I didn't think about that before. So once I know what my pinion angle needs to be, I will reset the tabs to that pinion angle and then I'll put the truss back on. It'll get welded where the link bar tabs meet the truss. It'll get welded fully on the ends. There will be just a very select few welds across the front, maybe an inch there, an inch in the center, and an inch there. Very minimal welding there because again, I don't want warpage. This gap will be filled with weld, which will not only close the gap, but it will also weld the link bar tab to the truss itself. And lastly, I made some slits in the front right where the link bar tabs are. I actually missed a little bit. I'm going to have to fix that. But when I fill these with weld, it will also weld the inner link bar tabs to the truss itself. So once I have the engine and transmission installed, I'll know the pinion angle that I need to set the axle to. And then I can move on to completely installing the truss. And with that, our pointless axle truss is complete. Hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so YouTube will notify you of the next project. A custom Watts Link differential cover. Until then, my friends, keep moving forward.